Hi, my name is Kevin Jones, and in this walkthrough, I'll show you how to install the Rock Solid Knowledge SAML component as a service provider. So in a moment, I'll show you how to create a web MVC application and show you how to install the Rock Solid Knowledge SAML component to use as a service provider inside that application. So if we have a service provider, we also need a SAML identity provider. And for this demonstration, we're going to use Identity Server 4. And in this instance of Identity Server 4, I've used the Rock Solid Knowledge SAML component as an IDP. And I'll show you how to do that in a later walkthrough. So let's get on to writing the code. So the first thing we need to do is to create a new project. So I'm going to use JetBrains Rider for this, but exactly the same principles apply if you're using Visual Studio. So for this new project, I'll call the solution SAML on the project SP. And I'll just go ahead and create this. So I know that later in the code, I'll need to use a certificate. So I've just copied the certificate from Identity Server and included that in the project. And that's this idsrv3test.cer that you can see here. So now that we have this, let's go and update the code to add the SAML authentication. So the first thing I want to do is in startup.cs, we have a call to use authorization. I also want to call use authentication here. I also want to make sure that we run this application on the correct port. So when I run identity server as the IDP, that will be running on port 5000. So I want to run this one on port 5002. So to do that, I'll go to properties, and launch settings, change the port to 5002, and also delete the HTTPS URL as we won't be using that here. Okay, so now that we have that, let's just run this and show that it works. And sure enough, this fires up on localhost 5002. We can see the application name as SP. Okay, so we can see we can run the application. So what I'd like to do now is add an authorized endpoint to this application. So when the user hits that endpoint, they have to go through some authentication before they can see that page. So let's do that now. So to show how to add authentication and authorization, I'm going to add a new endpoint to our controller. And the controller that we have is the home controller. So in here, I'll add a method called details. And this method will show the details of the claims that are in the token that we get back when we authenticate. So to do this, we'll return a view. And in this view, we'll add those details. So I can create this view. And we'll have this initially as an empty view here called details.cshtml. And in here, I want to do two things. I want to display a header that says the user is authenticated. And then I want to display the claims in a list. So we'll add an unordered list here. And then we want to iterate over those claims. So the claims are part of the user and the user is in the HTTP context. So I can reach into the context and pull out those claims. So something like this. And then once I have the claim, I want to display the name and the value for that claim. So if I rerun this code to make sure it's being compiled and then go back to the browser and go to slash home slash details, we see authenticated, but there are no claims. And if I go back to the code and look at the home controller, we're not authorized yet. So nobody's logging in to here yet. So on the details action, I can add the authorized attribute, rerun the code, go back to the browser and refresh. And now we get an exception. So now we have no authentication set up we have no way of getting to this page as the user is not authenticated and therefore not authorized to use the page. So now that we have this in place, let's go and add the SAML authentication. So we add the authentication inside Configure Services, and we do it by calling services.addAuthentication. And here, as we're using the authorized attribute, we want to configure the authentication. So we do this normal way by using the options parameter to add authentication. And we need to set two values. We need to set the name of the default authentication scheme and we'll use the name cookie here. This is the name of the cookie that we'll use for the authentication. And we'll add that cookie and set this name in a moment. And we also need to set what's known as the default challenge scheme. So when the user authenticates, they get challenged. And in this case, the challenge is going to be using SAML. And we'll name that challenge IDP1. And again, we'll add this challenge in a moment with this name. And we'll see how to do that. So first of all, to add the cookie, we call add cookie and we give it the name cookie. And now to add the SAML. So to add the SAML, we're going to use the SAML component from Rock Solid Knowledge. So first of all, we need to add that component code and we do that through NuGet. So I'm looking for a package called rsk.identityserver4.saml. 
and I'm going to add that to the service provider application. So once we have that, we'll now have an add SAML 2P authentication method. It's here that we need to name the scheme. So we'll call this IDP1 and also pass this the options. So the first options I'm going to add here is the license key. I have a license key called demo, and this is the value of my license key. We can then add some general configuration options for this component. So the claim type we're going to use is called sub. When we authenticate, the IDP will call back into us and we set the path for that callback. And that's going to be sign in SAML1. And we also have to specify the cookie we're going to use, the sign in scheme. And the name of that is cookie and that matches the cookie we set above. We then need to configure two further things. We first have to configure how we'll connect to the identity provider itself. So the endpoint that's providing the SAML authentication. And we do that by adding an identity provider options. So here we provide the unique ID for the service provider. We provide the public key to verify incoming messages and assertion signatures. And we provide two endpoints, one for signing on and one for logging out. We also have to configure ourselves. So we have to configure the service provider. Again, we specify an entity ID. This is the unique ID of this provider. And we specify the metadata path. And this is the endpoint from which the identity provider will get our SAML metadata. So once we have these three parts in place, we can rerun the application. And if I go to the browser and refresh, we now get redirected off to the login page. And this is hosted by our identity server. So this is running on localhost 5000. If I enter my username and my password and click on login, then we get redirected back to the home details page. We are now authenticated. And from here we can see the claims. So we have the name, we have things like the identifier and other claims associated with this user. So that's the end of this walkthrough. Thank you for watching. And I hope that helps you when it comes to configuring the rock solid knowledge SAML component.